Hey guys, Happy Kevin here, and I'm back with another video. This time, um, this is more of a tip video, and this is going to be a tip for anybody who uses Auto for XP, um, or Auto Photo, Photo Real Scenery, um, and especially if you're using it in um, together with helicopters. So I'm here. I'm here somewhere in New Zealand, um, and. I've just downloaded some auto photo off of auto uh, for XP, and um, this is Bing Photo, and uh, it's quite a southern area, of course, New Zealand and a lot of mountains, so it's not the best quality. It is zoom level 19, but it's it's not the best quality. Um, so from this altitude, it's not too bad flying over. And if I had, you know, buildings here, it wouldn't look bad. You know, it's it's fine flying over, especially if the forests were a bit more dense. Um, possibly it it uh, it wouldn't be bad, um, you know, to look at and and fly around in from a couple of hundred feet. But if we were to go and want to land somewhere, maybe um, on a beach or something, um, maybe just right here in this uh, in this small property. See, as we get down closer, it gets more and more difficult to reference something. And you don't quite know how far off the ground you are. And you kind of have to look far in the distance and look at the horizon. And if you're in a uh, in some weird terrain, maybe on a mountain, it's going to be quite difficult to see. It's going to be, you know, blurry and it's all going to fade in together. Kind of like how being in snow, flying in snow would be in real life. You'd kind of get that um, wide out sense where you, you don't, you can't judge your altitude above the um, above the ground, um, but I have got a tip and a fix for you that will make this look a lot better as soon as you get down to get to down to the ground. And I'll uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, I didn't figure this out. I'll uh, I'll go out and I'll uh, do this to um, to my scenery, and then I will show you the result so I've got my uh, also minus 45 uh, plus 167 across New Zealand and um, and here we've got our earth nav data with our uh, DSF file we've got our terrain data with all the .ter files and then we've got our texture uh, this is all the textures um, um, TFG also for CFG not important not going to use it um, but if you have ever downloaded any scenery um, from anybody who have used some photoreal scenery around or who've made a texture and then made it into a polygon, you may or may not have noticed that there's in the pol file, dot pol file, you can put in a decal, right? The decal uh, structure is um, it's like this. So you just put in whatever file, dot pol file, you put the... Um, the uh, direction to the uh, .dcl file versus decal file and that decal file basically just adds a small texture on top of whatever so if you have a plain green texture right it can be literally just a green color if you run this over it it will look like grass it won't look very different it'll be the same texture repeated again and again and again of course because it's the same um, same color but if you have something like orthophoto where you have the um the different colors and it looks like real life if you run this on top you'll have a grass texture on top of everything that's green and an asphalt texture on top of any anything that's gray uh, kind of darkish and um and it will just it'll look like grass it'll look like asphalt it'll look like a custom texture of all this um this is this is great but um of course we get so many files when we download auto for XP. Could you imagine having a uh, .pol file uh, for every picture in here? This is a small, this is a small, um, what's it called, a uh, small cell, a small uh, grid, because uh, a lot of it is water uh, to the north side, but you can see how many there are just in this fairly small, um, you know, section of, of, uh, of the train. So adding a .pol file or making a .pol file for each one of these 
would be impossible. It would take you hours. It would take you days. It is just not worth it. But, of course, there's a way to get around it. Um, now, one thing that I figured out that helped me a lot on this is that, of course, in train, you've got all these .tr files. And .tr files are text files, right? So you can open them, and you've got the train. Um, you've got the texture on the train, and you've got the... Um, you, you can specify the uh, what, what kind of train it is, if it's... Uh, asphalt or concrete or you know so it'll change the um the feeling of the surface um this is of course very useful because on these files .tr files you can put the same thing you can put this in here and um and it will it will do the same thing you'll basically have that texture over it still right uh, but again we have many files in here you can we might even be able to count um 763 of course it says down there 763 items that would take forever to open up copy paste that thing in there uh keep a track of everything know where you got to it would be a pain right so i asked on a forum this was a forum for visual studio because i uh, have a bit of experience with visual studio so i thought would it be possible to create a script with Visual Studio that would do this? Well, I asked, and um, and a guy had a great response, uh, and it didn't even have anything to do with um, Visual Studio. Um, he said that creating a uh, a.cmd file or, or cmd file, oh, not what I wanted, and then uh, putting this very, very simple line of text or code in it would do what I wanted it to. So for every um, for every file in the folder, right, that has an extension or that has a name .ter, so the extension is a .ter, um, then it's going to take whatever's in this text called a.txt. It'll take whatever's in there and pop it in on a new line. How simple and amazing is that? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to demonstrate this. All I'm going to do is, uh, by the way, I'll keep the link down below. Or, uh, sorry, not a link in uh, a, um, what this file has. And all you do, of course, is uh, create a new uh, text document. You call it whatever you want. And then you uh, just rename txt to cmd. And then you have got yourself a cmd file. That's how simple it is creating a cmd file. Right click it, edit, paste the thing in there. And uh, you can run it. Just make sure that whatever you have in your CMD file, uh, whatever file uh, name it points to, just make sure that you have a t TXC file, that's called the same, um, and that you have whatever you want to place in there, in that folder, file. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, copy them over here. Now we have uh, these two files in here, and I'm just going to run this, and it's going to run through every single file, this is going to take a bit because we do have almost a thousand. But look how fast that was compared to if I was going to do that manually. That would be that would be absolutely incredible. Uh, so I'll jump in game and I'll show you how this uh, how this works. So I'll stand the game up. Of course, that small file went through and added the line of code to every single .tr file, and that was fast. You know that was that was seven hundred and, and something, like sixty three files, right? Um, that it went through and placed that line inside and we'll quickly okay we'll quickly have a look and we'll s just make sure that it's done it to every single one so we'll pick a random one uh open it with notepad plus plus and it's there we've got the decal library we got the uh the name of it and everything we need and it's just added, added it at the end of the um at the end of the uh, file that is how simple it is this is simple and again i didn't figure this out i'll uh, show you guy who did um, thank you very much to that guy. So the guy who uh, who uh, came with this idea, he has this response to me. Um, v Earl, V Earl, V Earl, absolutely legend. He has just made 
my life so much easier, and hopefully he's made your lives just so much easier. So um, I'll be uh, I'll be writing the game, and I'll show you the result uh, after we've added this. All right, so I am in here again, and um, and let's see, let's go to the same area, and let's see what it has done. Come down low, and we're starting to see the texture. You know, now we've got texture, and look at this. We've got a texture on top of our layer, and it looks quite good. Like it looks, you've got points of reference. You can see stuff now, and you can see how far away you are, and um, and it's not just a big blurry mess. Again, we can head somewhere else. We can head to maybe a grass area. Uh, not many grass areas around here. I'll uh, have a look. Pull some sand here, and even you know, we'll we'll zoom in, and we can see the texture. We can see what it adds, and it just adds so much to um, to our experience. If you were to go and land offshore somewhere, this is uh, this is going to make it look so much better with auto photo. So you will have auto photo, and it'll look great from above. And then you get down low, you land in a clearing in between some trees, and you have got a grass texture on the ground. That to me is absolutely incredible. That is a live server and I will add this to every single one of my ortho uh, imagery and I have been uh, kind of put off by ortho uh, photos and um, it was only until I started playing on Betty X's uh, train uh, Charlie Anger Brow Delta Bella Coola that I figured that you can have ortho photo and uh, and have the quality that you would have with a normal mesh with normal textures at the same time, so you'll have something that looks entirely realistic from above, looks like it does in real life, and you'll get down clo close to the ground, and it'll look amazing. This is the same effect that they've got on the, um, on the, you know, train in uh, Bella Coola. Betty X has done more or less the exact same thing, except they have, of course, uh, done these files uh, customly, taken a lot of time, and they've they've done every single one individually. They don't have that many uh, texture files there, but they've they've got a .pol file uh, for every single texture in there that has all this stuff that it needs but this is just so awesome for anybody who's interested in ortho by XP and uh, flying helicopters or maybe even VFR doing some bush flying you can see still got the, the, the texture on top it doesn't look bland, it doesn't look boring, it doesn't look like you're you know um, flying just in a really blurry kind of pixelated photo it looks good, it really does so hopefully this has, this has helped you out. Check out the description for all of the information, all the stuff that you need. Uh, let me know how it works for you. Let me know what you uh, what you think of it and if it helps you out. It's uh, awesome. I'm so excited to share this and hopefully, hopefully, um, other people will get the joy of this the same as I will. Um, so again, yeah, hope you've, uh, hope you've liked this small video. And uh, I just had to share it. So uh, if you did, let me know. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.